Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you are having an amazing day. Let's get right into the stories. The first one is an entitled people story. Moving out of our cramped apartment in Midtown to the suburban neighborhood was a dream come true for my wife and me. We yearned for a larger space to start a family, and the prospect of a four-bedroom house was enticing. The extra rooms would be perfect for my writing studio and my wife's tailoring projects, which always seemed to sprawl across every available surface. But what truly sealed the deal was the presence of a pool, an oasis we could escape to during sweltering summer days. After navigating the labyrinth of paperwork, we finally settled into our new home. With the vastness of the house before us, it became evident that our belongings barely made a dent in filling the space. The remnants of our one-bedroom apartment seemed minuscule against the backdrop of the expansive lounge and empty bedrooms. And so, we embarked on countless shopping trips to Walmart and Bed Bath & Beyond, eagerly seeking items to furnish our newfound haven. Little did we know that our zealous consumerism would create a financial burden. We acquired countless unnecessary things, succumbing to the allure of the American market. Amidst the stress of transforming our house into a home, we began to acquaint ourselves with our neighbors. City life had taught me to keep my distance, but the suburban camaraderie was infectious, and I was gradually adapting to this newfound friendliness. While we made acquaintances with several neighbors, I rarely encountered those living closest to us. One side was occupied by a frequent traveler, always exploring foreign lands, and the other was an elderly woman I occasionally spotted tending to her exquisite garden. Her well-manicured flower beds drew admiration, but our interactions were limited to a few polite greetings. Curiously, during neighborhood events, the conversation inevitably revolved around Karen, a neighbor whom the previous homeowner had deemed troublesome. Intrigued, I awaited an encounter with Karen myself. Months flew by, and winter cast its enchanting spell over the neighborhood. Waking up to the picturesque sight of snow-covered streets reaffirmed our decision to move. The local association organized a delightful Christmas street party, bedecking the area with twinkling lights and offering warm mulled wine. The festivities allowed me to further acquaint myself with the neighbors, all of whom seemed eager to discuss Karen's reputation. Intrigued, I wondered what awaited me in my encounters with her. As summer approached, my wife and I continued our furniture shopping excursions, but we also decided it was time to prepare the nursery. Though not yet ready to have a child, we believed it prudent to have everything in order for when the time came. It was during one of our routine Walmart trips that the events took an unexpected turn. Returning home, our minds filled with thoughts of relaxation and trashy TV, a faint sound caught my attention. Investigating the source, I discovered Karen swimming laps in our modest pool. Even though my city mentality urged me to dismiss it as a normal occurrence, my wife assured me otherwise. Confronting Karen, I voiced my disapproval at her audacity to make herself at home in our backyard. She claimed that the previous owner had allowed her to use the pool, but I knew better. I firmly expressed my boundaries and told her I didn't appreciate strangers helping themselves to my property. The situation escalated quickly, and Karen's furious tirade accompanied her hurried exit from the pool, her towel comically threatening to trip her at every step. You'll regret this, she yelled, her face reddened with anger. The police will come and sort you out. The commotion attracted a few of our curious neighbors, who came over to witness the spectacle. They shared knowing looks and whispered, So you've had the pleasure of meeting Karen, huh? I couldn't help but feel a mix of amusement and frustration at the situation. However, Karen's threats didn't end with her dramatic exit. Just when we thought the incident was behind us, our peaceful haven became the stage for a series of bizarre events. Our fake flower bed was upturned, likely a mischievous act of raccoons or other nocturnal creatures. We shrugged it off as gardening was not our forte anyway, but things took a more unsettling turn when we found our laundry dumped into the swimming pool, followed by our bikes mysteriously ending up in the same watery grave. It became evident that Karen was behind these acts of vandalism, but without concrete proof, it was a frustrating game of cat and mouse. Determined to catch her in the act, I decided to set up a webcam by the upstairs window, serving as our makeshift security system. Days passed, and the atmosphere remained eerily quiet, leading me to believe that perhaps Karen had given up on her campaign of harassment. That is, until the day my wife and I returned home from a visit to the fertility clinic. As we stepped into the backyard, 
my wife let out a blood-curdling scream. I rushed to her side and followed her trembling finger, pointing towards something floating in the pool. My heart raced with a mix of excitement and anger. Finally, we had caught Karen red-handed. Without hesitation, I called the police, explaining that I had irrefutable evidence of Karen's trespassing and property damage. When the officer arrived later that evening, I recognized him as the same one from our previous encounter. We briefly exchanged pleasantries, catching up on the events of the past few months, before I eagerly presented the footage from the webcam. The officer's eyes widened in disbelief as he watched Karen sneak into our backyard, take a leisurely lap around the pool, and then commit the unthinkable act of defecation right in the water. It was a grotesque sight, and I was both appalled and relieved that our suspicions had been confirmed. With the evidence in hand, the officer wasted no time. Karen was taken into custody and brought to the police station for questioning. Subsequent investigations revealed that she suffered from mental health issues, which contributed to her erratic behavior. It was determined that she required professional care and would be transferred to a suitable facility. While a pang of guilt tugged at my conscience for the repercussions she faced, the overwhelming feeling was one of vindication. Finally, our peaceful suburban dream could be restored, and we could live without fear of sabotage or intrusion. The next one is a pro-revenge story. My husband and I are in our late thirties and child-free. Some people on the child-free subreddit said I should post here too, so enjoy the saga. My husband and I had been saving up for almost a decade to move to a tropical paradise. About two years ago, we bit the bullet and moved to our dream location. Housing here is super expensive, like Hawaii prices, so all we could afford was half of a duplex. It is beautiful and on the water with places for our boat. Unfortunately, Karen, Billy Bob, the boyfriend, and her three gremlins live in the other unit. Set up. There is some period of time we just went for a week here and there, but we live here full time now. The entire duplex was owned by an older gentleman who rented out both sides. The sides do not match at all. One side is a five bedroom, three bath. The other side of the duplex is a two bedroom, one bath. We bought the five bedroom. On our side of the property, we have 90% of the backyard, a gazebo and dockage about $150, since it is on a corner. The other side has a small backyard, patio, and maybe 15 out of dockage. The rental leases say the renters are entitled to their specific backyards, but there were no fences or anything, so all the renters shared the entire backyard. After we bought the house, Karen immediately tried to throw her weight around that they expected to continue with that privilege. I told her if she asked politely, we would try to accommodate her. She thought this meant she could use our backyard whenever she wanted. Party incident. One day, my husband and I are enjoying some drinks outside when a delivery truck shows up to set up a giant blow-up thing in our backyard. I asked Karen what she thought she was doing, and she said it was her kid's birthday. Then she had the gall to say it was a family and friends-only event, so we had to stay inside our house. Not wanting to be a total a-hole and ruin some little girl's birthday, I told Karen that after this, she had no access to our backyard, period. Karen shrugged and kept setting up for the party. During the party, a drunk adult wandered into our house, which shocked us all. I said Karen's house is on the other side, and he said, Oh, Karen said she owned the whole property and to use whichever bathroom was available. I directed him to Karen's bathroom, and soon after, she came storming into our house, screaming about how dare we make her look bad to her friends and how selfish we are that we couldn't even spare one bathroom. She said we didn't deserve all this space with just us. I told Karen to get the hell out of my house or I would be calling the cops. She finally left and the party wrapped up shortly after. Backyard remodel. After the party incident, we decided we needed to clearly define the backyard and build a fence. While we were spending the money, we decided to update the patio, put in a fire pit, and an outdoor kitchen. While the contractor was on site, nosy Karen had to come investigate. Since the fence would be the last thing built, I was vague and just stuck to telling her about the patio update. You could see her face light up because, of course, in her mind, what's ours is hers. When the workers started on the fence, Karen came out screaming for the work to stop. I went outside and told the workers to keep working and told Karen to butt out. Of course, in true Karen fashion, she called the cops. What happened next was hilarity on my part after explaining to the cop that we were building a fence on our property and the landlord, 
of which Karen was not, knew about it. When the cop gave Karen a stern lecture, I thought her head was going to explode. She went back into her house and slammed the sliding door so hard it sounded like something cracked. We got our fence, and I thought that would be the end, but of course not. The Boat Incident One day, Billy Bob entered the picture, and he was as much a terrible neighbor as Karen. He would throw cigarette butts and empty beer cans over our fence for disrespecting his woman. I didn't know Paradise had trailer trash, but Billy Bob is the epitome of the stereotype. Billy Bob has a boat. A 30 fishing boat, to be precise. Of course, that side of the duplex only has 15 of dockage. Since we have so much dockage and only one boat, we rent out the other dockage spots as month to month. People come and go, so if we don't receive rent from them by the end of the month and the boat disappears, we think nothing of it. We had a renter who tied up their boat on the property line, but Billy Bob wanted to park his boat and needed that space. Karen and Billy Bob posed as us, we were out of town, told the renters to be gone at the end of the month, and then parked Billy Bob's boat on the dockage. I only found out about it weeks later because the renter left a nasty review on the rental site we use. They said we were rude, and went back on the verbal agreement to let them stay for three more months. I was like, what the duck is all this? After a phone call, I quickly put two and two together. I called the cops who told Karen and Billy Bob they need to move their boat, or it would be towed. The equivalent of it, anyway. Karen and Billy Bob started screaming the boat is fully on their property. It isn't. Then changed to no one can own the water. True, but a seawall is deeded. That we are liars. And at some point, Billy Bob punched a cop and went to jail. I felt bad for the cops. So took them all snacks the next day with a note apologizing for neighbor drama. I ended up winning my small claim suit against them for lost rental income, but of course, haven't seen a dime. I eventually convinced the dockage renters to come back and gave them a few months free as compensation. Final Revenge If you've made it this far, congratulations. Get ready for a juicy justice boner. So with the collapsing market, we were trying to figure out what to do with our savings when a perfect opportunity opened up. The landlord who owned both properties was in desperate need of some cash and was tired of managing the property from 2,000 miles away. Because of course Karen is a Karen and called him weekly for every little thing. His only stipulation was we let the poor single mom who has been his renter for eight years finish her lease, which is up in July. Since we just have money, we were trying to reinvest. And because now we get to control our neighbors, heck yeah, we jumped on that. Since we didn't need a realtor or mortgage, and an inspection had been done just a year ago for the old landlord to refinance, everything closed in just under two weeks. Karen was aware of a change of ownership. We registered the property under an LLC but didn't know who until eight days ago. I went over to Karen's house and knocked on the door. Karen answered with a, What the duck do you want, idiot? I smiled, handed her our landlord information, and sweetly reminded her rent was due by Friday. But she could just hand me the check if that was easier. I've always heard descriptions of people's faces turning white, but this was the first time I have actually seen it. I told Karen that we are honoring her lease until the end of July, but afterward... She had better make plans to move because we intend to remodel it before the next tenants moved in. Bye, idiot. Edit. A lot of people misunderstood the beginning. Let's call our side of the duplex duplex OP. The other duplex is duplex Karen. We purchased duplex OP. After we bought it, duplex OP was no longer a rental. Both duplex OP and duplex Karen were for sale independently, but we only had the money to buy duplex OP. Duplex Karen is still a rental because it has never sold. Now, we own both Duplex OP and Duplex Karen. Duplex Karen is still a rental. Duplex OP is still not a rental. When we made property improvements to Duplex OP, it was ours and not a rental. Update 1. Not much to update, folks. Karen and family's lease isn't up until the end of July. Rent has been paid on time. As far as I know, she doesn't have a new place lined up. We've served her 30-day notice we will not be renewing the lease. We also offered in writing that we will prorate July and waive the termination fee if they want to leave before the end of the lease. Beyond the near-weekly loud parties and having to call the police because the kids were throwing lit fireworks at our boat, not much beyond the norm. Update 2. Long story short, Karen and family are still in the place and not paying any rent. They were served with eviction, but due to COVID stuff, we can't actually do anything about it. 
At least Karen and Billy Bob had a giant fight, which ended up in him being arrested and he hasn't returned. I've been told by our lawyer that once some laws are changed, removed, in September, we can have the police escort them off the property that day since we've already filed the eviction. It's just a crap show right now. Karen is being extra smug. She tried pushing her bounds and kept coming over to our property. A talk with the cops set her straight, but she's playing music loud and just tossing her trash everywhere. We really wanted to move our elderly parents in after a quick remodel because dad needs shoulder surgery badly and mom now needs a walker. They need more care, and it's getting harder driving two hours a day to do that. Our parents want their own space, though, and won't live on our side with us. My husband and I are trying not to be angry and make things worse with Karen, but we are both exhausted. Things just suck. Update 3. Life is weird. Karen is still here. Since we couldn't evict her, my partner went to stay with their parents for a few months, so in-laws could get the surgery care they needed. They are doing better now, which is great. Here's the weird part, though. In October, Karen's mother, Susan, came to live with her since Susan's landlord chose not to renew her lease. Susan is an angel. Susan was mortified at Karen's and the kids' behavior. Susan is a tough one and has been cleaning house, both figuratively and literally. The kids are so much better behaved, and Karen stomps around like a sullen child. Susan and I share drinks every few days in the backyard. We bake together, too, every weekend. For Thanksgiving and Christmas, since no one was traveling for the holidays, we made a big feast and set it up outside with some backyard games. It was a great time, and even Karen was being pleasant. I tried to tell Susan not to worry about rent until they find another place, but she insisted on paying. I lied about how much the rent was, so it's only a half payment, but it just covers the taxes insurance. We drew up another lease that is month to month. Susan wants to move back home at some point and take her daughter with her. Karen, I think, is ready for a change too, but obviously with COVID it might take some time. It's pretty pleasant right now though, so I'm in no hurry for them to leave. The next one is a petty revenge story. Pretty great story from work this morning, where I got to one-up this guy. So I'll start by saying I work for my dad at his store. I work the front counter and interact with most people, customers. Also, I look a lot more like my mom. My dad runs a separate business as well, but anybody who needs to talk to him for either business can usually find him in the office here. So this guy shows up this morning looking pretty ruffled and asks if my dad was here. I replied, you just missed him, he's out for the morning doing a couple of things. He was very displeased by this information and was acting very loud unprofessional. He started looking around the store and eventually came back to the front counter with a piece of equipment that he wanted to trade for some work that he apparently did for him before. Keep in mind I know most of my dad's workers and have never seen this guy before. I told him that I don't do any negotiations while he's not here and I can't just let him leave the store with something for free. I told him that normally he probably wouldn't want to take that route, but he was welcome to discuss it with him once he's back. He looked at me and replied, you're making a big mistake here, and you must not know name very well because he would do this for me and blah blah blah. I just looked at him and replied, I actually do know him quite well seeing as he is my father. I told him that he could either leave or wait for my dad to get back. He kind of looked up at me and was pretty speechless. I could tell he felt stupid and regretted his comment. He ended up waiting around in his truck for my dad to show up. And guess what? He wasn't going to do a trade. It's almost like I know my boss well. Apparently the guy just worked like two days for him, and then quit. Plus, the thing he wanted was way more expensive than what he was owed. Side note, the pay wasn't made yet because we are bi-weekly. I swear some of the people around here are nuts, but a petty don't-you-know-who-I-am moment made my day. The next one is an entitled people story. My ex-friend is commonly called a Karen. She's very entitled and has a bad habit of actually screaming for managers over the smallest things. I've watched this 35-year-old woman scream, Get me the manager, Oregon, I will call the cops, at a restaurant because the waiter accidentally gave her iced tea instead of sweet tea. What are the cops going to do? I don't want to use the name Karen because it's overused already, so let's call her E.E., e. and I used to be friends. I can't remember why. She comes off as sweet and caring, but she's the most entitled person I have ever met. E. also struggles with fertility and is desperate for children. She tried to adopt a child, but because of her mental health problems and unstable lifestyle of hotel hopping, she was denied. She doesn't have a job. She's technically homeless. Her boyfriend is a 21-year-old douchebag. 
and she tends to hoard animals that all die in unusual circumstances. Her last cat died mysteriously at only two years old and was perfectly healthy. I was there when she adopted him and heard the vet state he was healthy. Suddenly he dies and she claims it was heart disease, then claims it was a seizure, then claims it was kidney problems, then says that he somehow flew across the room and purposely aimed into the wall. Yeah, a little suspicious. My other friend Kara did call animal control on her and found she had six rats, five hamsters, one dog, and four cats. She claimed all of them were emotional support animals and that they were medical equipment, and taking them away would be against the law. Big yikes. She's not well. A while ago, she was saying how desperate she is to have children and was talking about looking for a surrogate. She wanted someone to carry a child for her for free with a list of demands for the surrogate. All for free. Now we all but her know that crap ain't free. Human incubators aren't a free service. And mistreating anyone in that job is a good way to be in a legal battle. I listened because, well, me explaining the truth to her would be like me placing my head in a garbage disposal, completely pointless and 100% painful. I made a comment about how one day uterine transplants might become more successful and more common and how great that would be. I brought it up because I'm not entirely in love with my uterus. I don't plan on ever having children, and I'm not against the idea of uterine donation. I still cannot find a doctor that will take away my baby-making abilities because I'm too young to make such a decision. I'm 27. I feel like if I wanted to change my mind, I would have before now. Not the point, sorry. I made the joke of me wanting to donate my uterus to someone who needs, and deserves it, since I have no plans on using its baby-holding abilities. That's when E says, Yeah, then I would have you give me your uterus so I could finally have a child. Now I thought she was joking, I truly believed this was a joke. It wasn't. E and I had a falling out, thank goodness. And I thought we could just part ways quietly. Yeah, she had other plans. She posts all over Facebook and pings me saying I had made a legal agreement to give her my uterus or to be her surrogate. Never once did I say such things, and now she has her friends after me, harassing me in DMs for giving her false hope and mental anguish. E is threatening to sue me for my uterus and for causing extra trauma by not following through. I'm just... confused and baffled. I'm also curious how can she afford a lawyer if she can't afford food for her many animals? Are lawyers suddenly cheaper than I recall? But also, last time I checked, you can't be sued to give up a body part, can you? Especially if no legal agreement was ever made, right? I'm lucky to have a lawyer family friend. He's agreed to help set me up with a meeting with a colleague of his if this turns serious. It's doubtful it will, but E is definitely having a public meltdown over our friendship ending. Oh, and yeah, I wish this was a fake story. I wish I was lying here. This person is not mentally sound, and she has threatened people over the ridiculous things. This isn't a new behavior for her. In the past, she threatened to call CPS on someone online over a disagreement. She bragged about doxing the person's address to me and boasted about calling CPS on them for spending more time disagreeing with E than watching their child. This person E was threatening was a mother of a 14-year-old. It wasn't like the mother was neglecting attention to an infant or toddler or young child. Thank you for watching. I would really appreciate it if you could like the video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. We'll see you again tomorrow.